Welcome back, friends. Isla here with a Reddit relationship story from a married guy seeking advice after experiencing one of the most especially devastating things you can during a relationship. So he's 30 and his wife is 33. He says, I'm here looking for advice. I don't really have anyone I can turn to and the situation I'm currently in is absolutely terrible. I don't know how to move forward. I've been with my wife for 10 years, married for three. We have three daughters and she's a stay at home mom while I work full time. We own our house and have a good marriage, but we do have a lot of financial issues with just one income. And next week she's going back to school to finish her drafting degree. About nine days ago, August 10th, we were in bed and she asked me if we could talk. She asked me about bringing others into the bedroom. Uh oh, here we go. We've talked about it before, but she decided it was something she really wanted to try. Yeah, my guess is she's already trying it and this is just her way of getting you on board so she can justify her behavior. He says, I'm open to experiment and told her we could, if it's the right person and the right time. Then she brought up my close friend who we'll call Jake. Oh, with the guy's friend too? Jake has an open relationship with his wife and talks openly about group situations. It took me a little off guard because me and him have been close for like 15 years. We played in a band together in college. I told her that him being so close to us might be complicated, but she persisted that it could be okay. We then discussed fooling around with another girl and then we got intimate with each other. Afterwards, she got in the shower and I had a strange feeling that she'd been talking to Jake about this stuff without me. So I looked into her phone. I know it's an invasion of privacy, but we don't lock our phones and have never had a policy about it. I noticed that she had a muted conversation with Jake. There was a lot of missing bits to the combo, so I thought all of that was strange. We then went to bed. After she fell asleep, I checked again and tried to dispel my paranoia. I was going to tell her the next day that I went through her phone and apologize. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be the one to apologize. But then I found a deleted conversation she hadn't cleared from the deleted folder. I restored it and found about 60 messages between her and Jake. Bro. I cannot stand guys who put moves on their friends' wives. I think I might have more of a problem with these types of people than I do the cheating wives themselves. I mean, bros before man. He continues, there were texts from a couple days prior where he was talking to her about him and his wife's relationship. She then asked him if he ever thought about sleeping with her, and he said yes. Pfft, yeah, shocker. Then she said she'd thought about this as well. They talked about how this conversation got them both excited, then flirted about wanting to touch one another. It escalated to talking about meeting up and going all the way. And it was fairly graphic. I have screenshots of so much of the convo that I sent to my phone from hers. He was much more aggressive than she was. <laughs> That's not surprising. But she did reciprocate and talk back. They ended it by talking about her coming over the next day to hang out in Blaze. <laughs> yeah, I've said this in other videos and I'm not trying to demonize anyone who smokes because I know not all people are like this, but why does it always seem like the girls who are willing to go and have smoke sessions with guys while they're in a relationship are always the ones who want to cheat? Anytime a girl says she's going to go have a smoke session with a guy, more often than not, she's smoking more than just a blunt. If she smokes, she pokes. And I know that statement was made years ago about girls who smoke cigarettes, but when it comes to this kind of smoking, it's almost always true as well. Anyway, he says, this smoke session was supposed to take place while I was at work and the girls were at school. Then on the 9th, she texts him and asks him, what time should I come over after she drops the girls off at school and I go to work? He texts her back and says whenever. Then she texts him again about a half hour later to let him know that she's arrived. And later that night, she texts and says that they never need to talk about it it again and he needs to keep it to himself. She also says she feels terrible for what happened and he assures her that it's okay and that they can keep it their secret. She says that it was only about her wanting to adventure with her body but it went too far. The next night is the 10th when I find out about everything. I wake her up and confront her about it. She breaks down and admits to everything. While at his house, they talked for a little bit about what group action is like and then he started to do things to her. She then reciprocated but once she was bent over, she claimed she started to cry. Then they stopped and held each other for a bit before she left. So then I ask her how she can do this to me and she cries and says that she's sorry. She says she made a mistake and was going to tell me everything the next day. Pfft, yeah, I'm sure. I left and stayed at my friend's house for a few days. <laughs> yeah, hopefully not Jake's house. <laughs> and her mother drove four hours to stay with her and help with the kids. I came back three days ago after her mom had to leave. She says that it happened because she had a very high drive after a long period of a low drive because of her medication and the lack of autonomy from raising kids at home for years. It's always the pot blazing single moms who have these excuses and do this kind of stuff. They're completely bored with life, just looking for any way out of this monotonous lifestyle. And this is what so many of them choose. He says she also said that she was very curious about bedroom stuff involving other partners and it led to her receiving attention from another person. So I want to forgive her and move on. I still love her and my family. I want to keep what we've had. 
We plan to go to therapy. Bro, are you serious? Forget this chick. I want to ask anyone who's been in a similar situation what they've done to forgive and what each of us could do. I want to trust her again. Well, that's not going to happen. And then he has an edit that says, some things I just wanted to clarify for everyone. I contacted Jake the next day and asked what happened. He said he had nothing to lose because he knew our friendship was over. He basically told me the same story, but told me that there was no mouth stuff, which is something that she had mentioned. I contacted his wife the next day and she said he admitted everything to her and she also read the text messages. She gave the same story said that even though they had an open relationship that this still broke her trust and they're separating. <laughs> well, at least that guy got what was coming to him. Serves him right for doing this to his best friend and his wife. He says, I choose to believe that she didn't go all the way with him because I got it from three sources separately and got basically the same story. Oh, wait. So he, she was crying before they actually went all the way? You're saying that all they did was the mouth stuff and that was it? I didn't catch, I didn't understand that part. He says, it doesn't make it any better, but I wanted to clear that up. Both of our families and friends know about the whole thing. I told him and his wife that they aren't to contact me or my family ever again. And they both agreed. This is so whack. And this is why I always say you shouldn't be friends with these scummy type of people like this Jake guy. Oftentimes, these guys who have no control over their bedroom behavior, like guys who just have to sleep with anything they can, if you're friends with them, there's no doubt that they're going to try to do this with your wife. And if you can't completely trust your wife, you better believe that something like this could happen. That's why I just say to avoid these type of scummy guys altogether, because who wants to be friends with a person like this? Now, I'm sure this person obviously didn't realize he was that kind of guy, or maybe he did. I don't know. He's like a swinger or whatever. So you should have known that there was something up with him. But typically when you're friends with these guys who just want to sleep with every person and whatever they just are selfish heartless type of people being friends with them is not a good idea because it's almost inevitable that they're going to do something to you down the road and even if you're married or dating someone who isn't willing to go along with it just the fact that they would even try to do this type of thing makes them the kind of person you just don't need in your life i've had friends who were part of a friend group where they were this type of guy who would even hit on people's girlfriends and things of their wives. And they'd be like, oh, that's just him. That's just how he is. And it's like, why are we putting up with this? Why do we continue to spend time with this guy or pretend like he's a decent person or worthy of our time? Like get him out of the friend group. He doesn't belong here. He doesn't deserve to be here. He's a piece of garbage. Why do we continue to put up with this crap? I just don't understand people who are willing to be friends with guys like this. And my advice to the guy who wrote this story is, sorry, my friend, but if I were in your position, it would be divorce for me. Even if she didn't go all the way, the fact that she even made the plan and went over there and did whatever she did, it's just too much. I mean, it's bad enough that she just did this behind your back, but also the fact that the person with whom she did it was your friend. I mean, come on. There's no forgiving that, at least not for me. As far as advice on how you can find forgiveness or whatever, the only thing I can say is go to therapy and good luck, but I have a feeling this isn't going to last forever. But what do you all think about this situation? Let me know your opinion down in the comments and click like for the algorithm. And let's get into the next story, which I've already recorded. Trust me, it's a doozy. You're going to want to stay tuned. So he's 34 and she's 31. He says, Ashley and I have been together for five years. We met back in 2018. I remember the day vividly. I was coming home from work as a traffic controller when I came up behind a car that was sitting at a green light. I, of course, was tired and irritated from a long day of work, so I honked my horn and yelled at the driver to move. The driver waved their hand out the window. I got out of my truck to see what was going on, and the driver was her. She was in tears, saying that her car ran out of gas and didn't know where the nearest gas station was, and I offered to help her. She happily accepted. I pushed her car off to the side of the road to prevent any accidents. Since she didn't have a fuel canister, I used one that I had in my truck, took her to the gas station, filled it, and helped her out. Then we exchanged numbers, and from that point forward, we're calling and texting each other regularly. Bro, I know this story is going to turn out bad because, well, this is this channel, so of course it is. But it's pretty disheartening to know that that's what's about to happen because this is like the perfect romance story. Instead of meeting somebody on a stupid dating app or at a bar, some nonsense like most people, you met the girl because she ran out of gas on the side of the road and helped her get gas. And that's how you started contacting each other. Like this is the perfect romance story. And unfortunately, it's going to go down the toilet here in about two seconds, guaranteed. He says, we got along so well, which led to us eventually dating. My parents loved her and her parents loved me. We love the same anime music. Anime music? What is that? And even had the same taste in cars. Man, she's into anime too? You really struck gold here. Well, maybe not, given what we're about to probably find out. We rented a small apartment together and lived together ever since. Oh, there's where you went wrong. Do not live with your girlfriend until you're engaged on the fast track to getting married. He says, every Saturday night, we would change into our favorite PJs and watch some bleach. What is that? My Hero Academia. <laughs> Demon Slayer or... 
One Piece. I don't know what any of that is. That was our anime night. Oh, well, no wonder I don't know, because I'm not a dork. <laughs> no offense to the anime fans, I'm kidding. I loved her so much that I was planning on proposing to her. Last year, my friend from high school, Tony, moved back to town after he divorced his wife. The first night he came back, we decided to crack open a few beers and reconnect after not seeing each other for 15 years. I told him to stay the night, since he was too drunk to drive. Then about a week later, Ashley started behaving oddly, not like her usual self. Instead of having our normal anime night, she would rather go out with her friends and have a girls night out, or she'd go help her parents or something along those lines. Girls nights out, no good. She got a taste of some new D and now she's looking for more. Or she's just lying about the girls nights out and she's going to see this Tony guy, guaranteed. Like I said just a couple videos back, if suddenly your wife or girlfriend has lost interest in you and nothing seems to have changed except she's got a new job or in this case it seems like some new guy came into the picture more often than not it's because she's into someone else or they've been in her so he says unsurprisingly bedroom stuff became less passionate and seemed more like a chore for her she even stopped saying i love you before i left for work in the morning tony even stopped talking to me even though we were good friends it seemed strange but i didn't think much of it that is until last week. The job site had to be shut down early that day due to heavy rain. And when I got home, I saw Tony's car was parked out front. I thought he was waiting for me to get home so we could hang out. And then I walk inside to find him on the couch while Ashley was completely bare riding him. Oh no, bro, that is the worst sight possible. My heart goes out to you, my friend. But how much y'all wanna bet Tony isn't into anime? I'm just saying, don't shoot the messenger. He says, in that moment, it was like my brain had shut off all emotions inside my head. I felt no anger, no sadness, no hatred or heartbreak. Nothing. Well, that's kind of the right thing to do. I was numb. I stood there for about 10 seconds before they noticed. Why am I imagining that guy from the beginning of Minority Report? I forgot my glasses. <laughs> She kept crying and saying that it wasn't what it seemed. <laughs> sure it wasn't. That it was a mistake and that she's sorry. Yeah, a mistake that she continued to do over and over, I'm sure. I simply packed my stuff and left the apartment. The only thing I said to her was an emotionless goodbye before leaving. Good, that's what you should have done. That's the right way to respond. I called my dad and told him what happened. I also asked if I could stay with him for a bit and he let me move into the house. I'll keep you all updated if anything happens in the future. As of now, it's been five days since the event and I still feel nothing. No emotions, just numb. Am I broken? So then he has an update and some additional details in the comments, but bro, even though I made the joke about the anime, I couldn't feel more for you. This is terrible and I hate hearing people who have to go through this. Five years is a long time, so I can understand why you would feel the way you do. As far as you being broken, experiencing something like this can be pretty traumatic, so I imagine there is a part of you that will have this living with you for a long time. The only thing that I can say is perhaps you should try to get some therapy or something because it really can stick with you and can affect your future relationships and you absolutely don't want that so i can't tell you whether you're broken or not what do i know i'm just an idiot on the internet what i can say is at least you're like i always recommend being stoic about this the fact that you didn't just you know attack anybody during the situation in my opinion that was the right way to go about it now all you need to do is find an appropriate way to let out whatever emotions you're holding in in my opinion the best way to deal with these things is if you have a good guy friend that you can sort of unload this onto who's willing to listen to you go out for a couple of beers or something you know whatever can keep your mind off this not that i'm recommending you drink i'm just saying if you're the kind of guy who drinks beer having a beer with a buddy and being able to talk to him and kind of you know pat you on the back make you feel better about it that's the best way as far as I know that you can get over this. So in the update he says, I finally started to smile and laugh again. Well that's good. I've contacted my landlord and explained the situation. He told me not to worry that I'll be getting my full 100% of my deposit back and her deposit. Any damages to the apartment will be taken out of her portion of the deposit. Well, if you're getting both, then what does that matter? I contacted Ashley's parents and told them the situation. They were shocked and disgusted that their daughter could commit such a disgraceful act. They wanted me to forgive them for what she did, and I told them that they didn't need forgiveness because they weren't the ones that broke my heart. I blocked Ashley and Tony on my phone and all of social media. My mom was sad when she heard about it and my dad was furious because he really liked Tony. I don't think I can repeat what he said due to the graphic nature of his words and I'm slowly getting my life back on track. I'm focused more on family and my job now and my mother asked me if I would ever be joining the dating scene again. I didn't want to yell at her for asking such a question so I simply told her that I'd be thinking about it in a few months. Why would you yell at her? So then he has more details down in the comments and he says, Both Tony and Ashley blew up my phone until I blocked them. 
Most of the messages were from Ashley. She kept telling me that she was sorry and that she didn't mean to do it. She wanted to work things out. How could she not have meant to do it? Tony also said he was sorry, but then he went into anger mode and saying that I didn't deserve a girl like her. Are you kidding me? He's right though. I didn't deserve a girlfriend who would break my heart the way she did or a friend who would stab me in the back. Yeah, this Tony guy definitely sounds like a piece of garbage. So then someone in the comments says that they hope he gets vengeance on them that they deserve or whatever. And like I often say, that's not the right route, but good thing this guy doesn't get into that. He just says, I'm going to let karma take its toll on them. Her parents already can't stand her and they both have been shunned by nearly everyone they know. So it looks like they got what they deserved all after all. No need for this guy to bring himself down to their level and do anything that's going to get him in some kind of trouble. But that's all I got to say about this. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments and click like for the algorithm. Subscribe if you're new and share this video with someone you think might like it. Also check out my main channel for more relationship and cultural topics. Until then, hope you all take care of yourselves. Support and be good to good women. Peace.